Now, I know the first thing you're thinking, how can a conservative be from California, right? I want you to remember one thing. Where did Ronald Reagan come from, right? Now, if Ronald Reagan was alive today, he would have moved out of California. There's two reasons why I'm here. The first reason why I'm here, I want to do a report for my governor to learn how to be a good governor. Because, Yunkin, you got it right here. I appreciate it. You made history a year ago. And history's going to repeat itself again tomorrow. Now let's give applause to Newt Gingrich. For 40 years... When you ever use the word speaker, that's who you think of. For 40 years we stayed in the minority. People didn't believe we could win. He knew our policies were better. He knew America was more than a country. And he challenged it. And he proved the difference. 1994 was a turning point in America. And we've been on the road, we've been back and forth. Yesterday we went to three different states. We did Florida, we did Texas, and we went back up to D.C. We were on the border of Texas. We had 700 people sh uh, turn out. We were doing it for Myra, Florida. We did it for Cassie. We did it for Monica de la Cruz. These are communities that are 84% Hispanic. But you know what they are? They're new Republican territory. We can keep it up everywhere we go. But I, I mapped out. I've been to 40 states just in the last two months. <laughs> and I won't walk off the stage. Either. I'm thinking that's it. But I could be anywhere. We have races in Rhode Island, Connecticut, Oregon, Washington, California. Michigan, you name it. But when we went to put our map together, and I've already been down here a couple times, I said the number one place I want to be the night before the election, I want to be with Jim Kiggins right here. This is This is why I'm here. She is the right person for the job. If you wanted to map out, you didn't have any name of who could be a member, what are the characteristics you would look for? Someone who has a servant's heart. Someone who understands your community. Someone who understands health care. Someone who has integrity. Someone who would risk their life for you even if they didn't know you. She has already done all that. But you know what? I was debating this Democrat on the road and he, was, he, he thought Congress was doing well. He thought America was in a good place. And he goes, you name me one person of all your candidates. You name me the one man who could change Congress around. I said, I know that one man. It's Jen Kiggins. She's going to change. <laughs> and you know what? This is the number one race I'm going to watch tomorrow night. Because when Jen wins, we win the majority. Delegation. I just saw Rob Whitman. Where's Rob? Congressman Rob Whitman does an amazing job for you. Thank you for being here. But you know what's happening? Doesn't this feel different than a normal election? It feels different. It's not about a party. It's about a country. And you know what happens when you live through history? At that moment in time, you don't realize you're living through it. You look back upon it. And then it's a moment that happens about every 40 or 50 years we have these hinge elections where the country doesn't decide based upon a party, they decide based upon a country. It's those moments that happen where people join from other, from other parties because they want to change, they want a new direction. And when we look back at this moment, at this time, history is repeating itself in America. I want you to think about that for one moment. It seems a lot like 1979, 1980 in this country. You know why? Because when we have weak leadership, America becomes weak and the world becomes dangerous. You can watch it. Think about the similarities to our current president, to Jimmy Carter. When was the last time we elected somebody to the White House? Not by telling us what they would do, the aspirations for the next four years, but just pledging to be something they would not. Carter pledged not to be Nixon and Biden pledged not to tweet. That's how it got done. When was the last time we had Americans held hostage in the Middle East? 
in Iran under Jimmy Carter, and Afghanistan today under Joe Biden. When was the last time we had the strongest military in the world, second to none, but our commander-in-chief looks weak? Jimmy Carter couldn't land the helicopters because he didn't have gin when they went in to surprise the hostages. Joe Biden made one of the biggest failures for this nation when he wouldn't listen to the military generals. He made his own decisions in Afghanistan, and he brought us 13 new gold star families that did not have to have their family. Do you want to know how dangerous is what he just did? It has set us back decades. You just take the Wall Street Journal this weekend. You look at the front page, the front picture. You know what you see? President Xi of China, who just changed his constitution to keep him in office, sitting with the chancellor from Germany, cutting deals. Why? Because they question America's integrity and willing to stay together because of the decisions of Joe Biden in Afghanistan. That's what it matters. When was the last time we had a president that told us to expect less in America, that tomorrow wouldn't be better than today. We had to accept something little. Remember what, remember what, <laughs> he's feeling me. Remember what Jimmy Carter did? I was in the sixth grade. He had this television I was watching and he put a sweater on, told us that he turned the heater down and that the best days were behind us. When gas went to five dollars a gallon, what did Joe Biden say? Oh, that's a good thing. You should expect it. No, we shouldn't. We're Americans. Tomorrow's going to be better. You know why? Because you're going to elect Jen Kiggins. Yeah. When was the last time we had an energy crisis like this? And both men looked to OPEC to solve our problems. You know what happens? Look, I'm for all the above. Every study you see, we need more wind, we need more solar, we need more natural gas, we need more hydro, we need more nuclear, we need, we need more oil as well. We need it all. And you know what? God has blessed us. We can be energy independent, but we shouldn't just be energy independent. We shouldn't just sell it to our allies. Let's sell it to our enemies and make them dependent on us. You know what? When you have a president that picks one form of energy over the others, you make us weak. Jimmy Carter was the first president to put solar panels on the White House. And you know what? In 1979, you couldn't get gas on an even day if your license plate ended in an odd number. Can you believe that was America? Well, you know what? America's repeating itself because you can't get baby formula on every day you need it as a parent today because of that. You know, my mom, she's 81 years old. She cannot drive a full tank of gas in a week. Every day, she takes her little dog, Mia, she gets in the car, and she goes to Sonic, because Mia likes the ice. Then she goes to lunch with her friends, she comes by, says hi to my daughter, and then she goes back home to watch Jeopardy. <laughs> but every single Wednesday, she goes to Costco, and she takes a picture of the long line, she takes a picture of the price, and then she texts me and asks me, what have I done about it this week? You know what I tell her? One more day, Mom, one more day. When was the last time we had inflation like this? 41 years ago. You know, inflation is the worst thing you could do to society. But let me put it in perspective for you. How many of you could give up one month of your wages? Think about it. Could you give up one month of your wages? But do you know what the Democrats have done? They have taken one month of your wages. One month of your wages is 8.3% of your overall year. Inflation is over 8.3%. So they left you with 12 months of bills with only 11 months to pay for it. And you know what? He thinks the economy's doing great. And then when you ask him about it, put the facts, what does he say? Well, I'm worried about the world. Well, you know what? We want someone like Jim Kiggins who understands how to defend America and is worried about you first. Look, you're not far from D.C. I want, I want, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a deal with you. If you promise to work hard for the next number of hours, if you do exactly what you did last year 
and you make Virginia bring us the majority, I want you there on January 3rd. I want you there. I want you to watch her hold her hand up, defend the Constitution again, and the very first bill she's going to vote on, she's going to repeal 87,000 IRS agents. government should be here to help you, not go after you. But when you're there, I'm going to give you a tour of the office. And in this office, I keep a couple different portraits. I got Ronald Reagan right behind me. He's in color, right? You know what Ronald Reagan would tell us? If you believe these policies and your principles bring people more freedom, let's be happy about it. Because you know why? More people want to show up for Thanksgiving. They want to know what you're drinking. That's Jim Kiggins. She knows her principles. But the other thing Reagan would tell us, peace without freedom is meaningless. You see, it's human nature that we crave peace, but you can never attain it without having freedom. We learned that through COVID, did we not? Who better to stand up for your freedom than someone who has been defending your freedom her entire life? Jen Kelly. But I'm going to end you with this. I want to take you into my conference room. Because I've got this portrait, it's big, it goes 8 feet by 16 feet. And it's a portrait of Washington crossing the Delaware. You all know that, right? When did he cross? Christmas, 1776. You know, Steve Jobs hadn't invented the iPhone yet, so there was no iPhone there to take a picture. You know who painted that painting? He wasn't even an American. He was a German immigrant who had lived in America. He wasn't there that day. He painted it in 1850 and 1851. You want to know why he painted it? Because he knew America was more than a country, that America is an idea. He had gone back to Germany. He heard of this story, and he thought, my talent is art. I'm going to paint this painting to inspire the Germans to rise up, to have a revolution based upon the values and freedoms of America. Now, he gets it historically incorrect. Because if you look, the Delaware looks like the Rhine. But he's German. We give him a break. For that. <laughs> he puts 13 people in a rowboat, but he only shows you 12 faces. Historians will tell you Washington wasn't in a rowboat. He was in a Durham boat, a flat boat. But if you look at that picture, he puts Washington standing up in a rowboat in the middle of winter with his hand on his chest. He looks so stoic. Each and every one of us would looking at that picture said, we would follow this man anywhere. I bet he has never lost a battle. But you know what history told us at that moment in time? Washington had only been a loser. He'd never won one battle. That was our first victory when we surprised the Hessians. Now what I want you to see is who's in the boat. Because that's what I see when I look at you. You see, the second person he's wearing a beret, he's Scottish. The person directly across from him that's in the green and is rowing in exact same cadence is African American. You come down to the middle of the boat, the person who looks like the strongest, putting the most into it in the red is a woman. Dressed a little like Jen tonight, is she not? And in the very back is a Native American. Now I cannot tell you from a historical fact that they were in the boat that night, but to this young immigrant who had lived in America, that's who he believed would be in the boat. Now, the second to last person, he's a farmer. I assume he's from Virginia. And he, he has this hand across his face. Now, what I believe is the hand of the 13th person we don't see. What I believe is Manuel is saying to all of us, look at us. We're not a country, but an idea. Having lost every battle, fighting the strongest nation in the world for the simple idea of freedom but willing to do it and risk it on our holiest of nights, here's a hand, would you get in and join us, that's as true today as it was on Christmas, 1776. You have a long history in this state. We would not be a nation without you. And we will not be a nation again that can deliver for the next generation unless you do what's needed in the next 24 hours. So what I want to present to you is an amazing woman. And when you're there January 3rd, you're going to watch her get sworn in. But I want you to watch one other thing. Because when you elect her, I want you to watch Nancy Pelosi hand me that gavel. <laughs> so just to 
as I describe. In that boat that night, the one who was leading it the strongest was the woman in red. The woman in red tonight has been leading us, I will tell you, to the best recruiting class we've ever found. You didn't know her, but she was behind a helicopter defending you in battle. You didn't know her, but she was the nurse who was making sure you or your children were taken care of. You didn't know her, but she was your state senator defending your freedoms. And after tomorrow, she's going to be your congresswoman that leads this nation back. Jim Kegel.